All right, I wanted to do a quick review of this setup with the Harbor Freight 3500 Predator Generator. I've been using it over 200 hours, and in this review I'm going to talk about why I covered it with solar panels, why I put it on a wagon, and also the performance of the generator itself. I've been using it in an off-grid application, living on some land in a camper. So let's start out with the cart and the solar panels. I built the cart because the generator is quite heavy. It does come with little wheels, but they're quite small, not big enough to roll it in and out of our shed. So I bought this cart at Harbor Freight, uh, the wagon. Uh, I think I got it for like $75. I had to assemble it, which took maybe 30 minutes. And then knowing nothing about generators, I thought, well, it's going to be sitting out here in the elements. Does it need to be covered? What will happen if it gets rained on? And after researching, uh, since it does have electrical components, that doesn't really mix with water. So some people were saying, yeah, I left mine out in the rain, hail, sleet, snow, and it's just bulletproof. Other people were saying, no, don't do that. So I went ahead and covered the generator and this uh, cover has kept it dry. I had these 100 watt solar panels sitting around for a couple years. So I uh, went ahead and integrated them into the frame and then I put silicone in the seams and the solar panels are connected to my battery inside. Uh, on a cool morning like this morning, I will run our fans overnight with my battery and then charge it back up with the solar panel. On really hot evenings, I'll start up the generator and just have air conditioning. This is a Predator Super Quiet 3500 inverter. It's quieter with a decibel reading than Harbor Freight's smaller generators. You can see here it has a 30 amp camper hookup. It does come with this adapter that plugs into the generator and then your 30 amp cord will plug into the adapter. It has two 120 volt outlets, uh, which I use, um, like I'll bring out a circular saw or a miter saw, compressors, it'll, it'll handle those no problem. It comes with a 12 volt plug with alligator clamps in case you want to plug uh, something that's 12 volt into here, like uh, charge a battery. And then this is the screen for how many hours and whatnot. I'll show you that later. And if you want to parallel the generators and get 6,000 watts by getting two, you can parallel them. This is the Eco. So if you want Eco to be on, get a bit better fuel and the generator runs quieter, you turn it on. It is recommended that you have it in the off position when you turn the generator on. And then this is the starter. Uh, the starter works really, really well for me. That's where you fill her up. And then that is a gas gauge. And there's a little red bar there that tells how close you are to full and empty. This door here is where you get uh, access to oil. Just unscrew it. This new generator comes with a handy dandy plug. So you uncap this and drain the oil into a pan. Then you recap it, put it back in here, and then fill her up through this port. So really convenient. Then this door is where you can access the battery, the starter battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. You can see how well it starts and see how quiet it is once it gets going. So I'm gonna put it to start and then here we go. This is how this cart works. So 
So I just lift this up. I have it on some heavy duty structural screws for hinges. And I just fill up the generator here through this port. And then this is a little window for the gas gauge so I can see when it's full. This is right up next to the generator. I'm just reaching out, touching it. So not too bad. Let's take you about 25 feet away. So moving away from the generator now. And this is about 25 feet away. And I've noticed that it sounds louder on the recording than it actually sounds in real life. Right now I'm just talking a normal, kind of quiet voice. If you keep backing up, so, still backing up. Now I'm about 50 feet away, and I barely hear it. So I can hear the birds, I can hear a plane in the sky. I can hear wind rustling leaves. So going back to the generator, closer. Now I'm about 10 feet away. So let's check out um, what kind of load it has on it. How many watts? So you push this button here for the reading. So right now it's putting out 123 volts, 3.1 amps, 381 uh, watts. And it's got 173 hours. That's the time it's been on currently. With runtime, oh, if it's running at about 700 watts, it'll run about 11 hours. If it's lower than 700 watts, then I imagine I'd get 12, 13 hours. It was a really hot night, and I was running the camper aircon basically all night, and I think it was running between 1,500 and 2,000 watts. The compressor was running all night. I topped it off at midnight, when I came out at 7.30, it was basically dry. So about, about seven, eight hours if you're gonna run it between 1,500 and 2,000 watts. That's a two and a half or 2.4 gallon tank. The size of the generator, the output that you get, uh, I think it is a fuel sipper. The pull start works really well too. Put it on start and 75, 80% of the time you just have to pull it once and it's ready to go. Sometimes when it's on a lower load, like 700 watts or under, it will rev oh, maybe every five minutes or so. Maybe I can get it on camera when, it, when I'm talking. Um, it'll rev up for maybe like two seconds, almost like to try to catch its breath, and then it'll go back down. So that's a little bit annoying. I have seen people take their oil cover doors off because they say that the generator with the casing it might have trouble breathing. I do have the oil cover off now. It hasn't done it, so it might just be a matter of giving it some more air to keep it from revving up every five minutes. But when it's under full load, it doesn't have any trouble whatsoever. It's a clean running generator, fuel efficient. It gives me all the power that I need. Yeah, I recommend the Harbor Freight Predator 3500 at this time. Hope this review was helpful. Have a great day.